Hello YouTube, I don't know if you can uh, see me just well or not. Or... Anyway, let me try to adjust this for you. Alright, so a common question that I've been getting here, here recently is how do you ground yourself when you're working on electronics? Um, so I thought I might take a, just a quick second and uh, show you. So if you'll give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, I got a couple things here with me. Um, that uh, you know, I want to show you. Um, they sell wrist straps that you can put, and then you can button here, and this will plug in the ground. And I'm, I'm sorry, my camera angle is all messed up. But they also let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here we go. Um, they also make gloves that you can put gloves on and I'm, I'm trying to stay in the camera and then this snaps to here and then the other end goes to ground okay um, the only problem with your wrist strap and your gloves is as you pull away this pulls away and this is the only Sorry, you have to forgive me. I'm, yeah, this here is the only thing that is supposed to touch your wrist. So if that pulls away, you're no longer grounded. So that's the flaw of gloves and um, wrist straps. What they do make is they make big old static mats huge static mats that unroll and they are conductive there's a copper mesh and there's the same plug here and you can lay this over your desk or your work area um, you might be able to see behind me here um, where I have this one um, set up uh, static mats these are about 40 bucks 40 maybe 50 dollars something like that fantastic uh, it's the best thing you can ever buy if you're going to work on electronics uh, at least more than once that is the difference of ending up successful with your repair or not successful uh, you can take a device apart work on it just take the screws out, put it back together, and be like, oh, I don't know what happened to it. It's just, it's just not powering up. It's because um, the human body has, on average, anywhere from 9 to 18 volts. Some people run a little bit higher than that. Uh, they can run 24 volts th through their system. So you're talking 9 to 18 on average, up to 24, 24 volts just by touching something. Okay? Um, most electronics, laptops, run off 19 volts. Um, cell phones, 3.6 volts. Uh, remote controls, uh, anywhere from 1.8 to 2.7 volts. Um, digital camcorders. I can't even get it. In, yeah, it, yeah, did, yeah, digital camcorders. Um, anywhere from four uh, I just turned it on uh, anywhere from like three to eight volts uh, now amperage is a different story um, but voltage wise there again let me just go back I uh, really want to get an amperage here now uh, but let's just say for example cell phones 3.6 volts if you touch it with your hands you're putting <laughs> nearly three times the voltage 
if you're not properly grounded. Way more than what the battery could ever do to it. So if you want to venture into laptop repair or cell phone repair or hard drive repair or any kind of electronic repair, you want to make sure that you're properly grounded. Now, some people say, oh, well, all you got to do is touch something metal and you're grounded. That is not true. It's only true if the metal device that you're touching itself is grounded and you're only grounded temporarily. It depends on what your feet and what your arms are touching. If you're in the cloth chair, you're developing static electricity. If you're on carpet, you're creating static electricity. So you must have a constant ground. Now, if you're none of the above, if you're on a wood chair, wood, you know, like hardwood floor, and you touch metal, only if the metal itself is grounded does it dis discharge you. People say, well, what's the best way to ground yourself? Okay, you can use straps like this that would, you know, like I said, would go to your wrist or your gloves, or it would snap onto that uh, little rubber. Uh, mat there with like a static mat it snap on and it goes to ground now I'm starting to get more and more and more questions well what's ground so uh, uncut unedited I want to show you the best fastest easiest way to ground yourself one second Okay. <coughs> Sorry. What I have here, and I hope that you can see this, this is just a regular, regular old computer cable. Okay, just for an example. It's got your neutral, your hot, and your ground, and your normal plug that goes in. And of course, it's right, yay long, four, five, six foot. The easiest way to do this is to cut this end off. Just like so. Here's this piece, trash it. This, you want to strip. One sec. Yeah, this video was not actually prepped or anything like that. I, I didn't really know I was going to do it. On, on the other end, you want you want to take a this is a pair of alignment pliers, but whatever you can do it with, but you want to remove both your neutral and your hot lug. So the only thing that you have remaining is your ground just like that. You want to break them both off and this is the only thing that you have remaining on this end. On this end, I went ahead and snipped that off just a little bit. On this end, you want to strip it back like so and you have a black, white, and green. Now, on AC current, black is your hot. You want to cut that clean off. White is your neutral. You want to cut that clean off. Green is your ground. And you want to take that and you want to strip it. Strip it. It, it just exposed the wire. Now, what you have on both ends is you have the green and you have the ground. Now if you want to be super efficient you can take a meter and test for continuity from here to here. You should have 100 percent continuity from going from one to the other. Now with that being said you can take this excuse me you can take this and your alligator clip that that goes to your either wrist strap 
your glove, or your static mat. S snap this end in, take your alligator clip, you can wrap it around it, and if you're going to do that, I would solder that. That way it doesn't slide off or, or it doesn't have, have loose connection and there's no there's no resistance. You want a good solid joint right here. Uh, and then you're you know connected through this strap. Now gloves and um, a wrist strap again is not recommended. A static mat is. Once you have this tied into your little alligator clip there you simply take this in and you plug it into a socket. I think I have one behind me here. I do. It's right there. Now, that is ground. And for those that wonder where does ground go, ground goes to ground. Okay. DC, AC, ground's ground. So what happens uh, when you plug this in, it goes to the breaker panel. Uh, it's an AC breaker panel. Most of y'all know know what that is, and especially if you're probably watching this video, you, you at least have a general idea what it is. Ground ties into a neutral bar. A neutral bar is uh, unused electrons uh, within the system and it goes back to ground. It's not a bad thing. Excuse me, I'm just throwing away the trash. Um, yes, uh, neutral is unused electrons and it, it's returned back to ground. Now, every home on the outside where the power comes in, there is a ground bar. It goes straight down on the ground. And normally it's a, a good six, eight gauge ground and it's tied in and it gets hammered into the ground. That ground gets tied straight into the breaker panel and that's what all the, uh, of course the ground, all the grounds within your home gets tied into that and, and also the neutral of all the unused electrons goes back to ground. Uh, that, in that way you don't get variations and fluctuations and voltages and powers um, and it just saves a lot of energy saves on your power bill saves on a lot of things if unused electrons didn't go back to ground it would be a bad bad day for your electronics nevertheless that's what happens to it on, on, on another note if you live in an area to where it's dry it's it's just really 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 dry, and you don't have a lot of rain. rain. You you want to take a five gallon bucket at least once a month, and you want to go and you want to pour that five gallon bucket of water over top of your ground rod. You want to keep your ground rod, you know, like your ground rod, soft and wet and moist during a lightning strike or thunderstorms or any kind of surges. If it dries the ground separates it, it shrinks and you can have spaces in between and it may not be able to return those unused electrons from the neutral or during a surge it may not be able to discharge it in the ground the way that it needs to go so you want to keep it wet moist and that's going to secure uh, all of your home's equipment your electronics especially but in this scenario and the reason for this video is uh, during the process of working on electronics and how to ground yourself. The easiest way uh, is just to take your normal PC, computer, household power cable, break off the uh, two lugs here, your hot and your neutral, break it off, cut off the other ends, strip it. You can go to multiple websites my website of choice is allspec.com it's a-l-l-s-p-e-c dot com and you can buy all sorts of kind of geeky techy stuff um, plug it into your static mat tie this into your ground like I said I'd solder it so it don't come off plug that in the wall 
if you've got a static mat, everything on your mat and, and including you. As long as you have an elbow on it, everything is grounded, safe. Um, if you are wearing gloves, I'd recommend some kind of a, a wrist strap or something to where you can tie it, rubber band it to where if you reach over your shoulder, you don't stretch away that little grounding point to you because it will separate from you. And during that point, you're you're not grounded or anything that you touch is not grounded. It's just safer and better to have a static mat. That way you can just grab stuff freely, whether it be CPUs or RAMs or hard drives or motherboards. You just grab it, throw it on it. You ain't got to worry about it. Because it with a wrist strap or gloves, every time you're turning, you, you got to be conscious. Oh, oh, I'm pulling too hard. Whatever. Rule of thumb, if you want to venture in from a hobbyist and then maybe move into professional, get yourself some static mats, man, for sure. Anyway, um, I hope I answered all your questions. Um, if not, then just shoot me a message. Um, tell me what else. Uh, if you have any more questions, I don't know. I mean, my. My, my my whole YouTube channel is just just here for fun. I like you guys, man. You guys are fun, uh, and I do my best to kind of interact with you the best I can. So, uh, if you have any more questions, let me know. See you guys.